to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry fucking podcast. Where today, a few things. We're going to talk about politics and poetry. We're going to talk about COVID. And we are going to talk about somebody who fucking had the balls and the stupidity to make something personal. All right. So some of you who are um, listeners of this show regularly who wait for the episode to come out and then get mad when it doesn't drop the day that it normally drops. I would like to apologize to you guys for not putting episodes out, but after three years of being in hiding, COVID finally found me, and it wrapped its stupid little virus arms around my fucking throat. And uh, maybe because of all of the... uh, uh, vaccines and boosters I've gotten it didn't really like do a whole lot like I was very terrified of COVID for the whole three years that I've been not getting it then I got it and it was shit I didn't like it I don't want it again wasn't nearly as bad as I thought but some things that have happened from it are really weird a lot of people say they lost the sense of taste and smell mine is not my taste but my smell is like amplified like crazy like i could smell fucking everything everywhere all at once okay it's fucking nuts so that's kind of annoying the smoking is kind of shit and it feels like i'm just hanging out at a bonfire but um i some of you know i got the zipix toothpicks i've been using those to try to offset the smoking um and then yesterday i got one of the um little vapes it's fine i don't really like it very much but you know like if it um like i think that's actually it feels worse in my lungs i don't know how that fucking makes sense i don't know i'm trying folks i'm trying but anyway i i I'm not necessarily brain foggy, but I do not know what to say and do a lot. So maybe that is it. But it it's annoying. So I've been trying to do things to, I don't know, like kind of kick my brain into action. Like brain teasers and like platforming and puzzle video games. I'm trying little things to make my brain click in so if this podcast kind of goes off the rails um, hopefully I can fix it in editing but if not um, just know that I'm just trying to get better and um, hopefully I will be uh, back with that quick wit really soon okay so that's the plan other than that let's see here got some espresso today not because I'm trying to be fancy but because I ran out of instant coffee and yesterday when I was out I did everything that one does except fucking go to the fucking goddamn grocery store and get shit that I need. So um, I'm out of wine. I'm out of coffee. I'm out of peanut butter. So like for those of you who were on my stream yesterday, (laughs) you know I'm in panic mode right now. Um, Three of the four things that I need at all times I don't have. So that's bad. All right, but really, I want you guys to know that giving this podcast five stars anywhere where you listen to podcasts is the thing you're supposed to do so i appreciate you for doing that when are your mom's sodomy price for poetry that is still going on because the last week of the campaign i got sick and couldn't really do anything for it and so i extended it a week and then realized that that week of me healing I still couldn't do anything. So now it's going until April 14th. And I think at April 14th, we're calling it. That's it. And we are over $700 right now. So if you are interested in picking up a amazing fat fucking book of poetry, um, go over to IGG.me slash at slash your mom. 
Y-E-R-M-O-M, and you can pick your tier and pick your prize and pick your poison and support the only poetry book out of 2023 that fucking matters. That was kind of aggressive. Sorry about that. All right, so let's get into those motherfucking shoutouts. And who are we shouting out today? Who? 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 Oh, I need to update this list. This list doesn't have everybody. Okay, so if you are somebody who is in any of the groups that I'm talking about here and your name has not been called, just realize that by next um, episode, this will be all fixed. Okay, so I want to give a big thank you to those motherfuckers over there on Patreon. I want to give a thank you to Michael, to Cedar, to Harry. Now, um, people from Patreon have been moving over into YouTube, and that is a wise way to go. So if that's what you want to do do that just go to um, youtube.com slash at matt wall like at sign matt wall and you can join the channel there and you can also see my beautiful fucking hairy face here um, as i am whispering these sweet nothings to you now for those fuckers at the youtube thank you crew i want to give a big thank you too Patrick to Brit to JH to Jan and to Deb. You guys are awesome. I want to give a thank you to the big swinging pendulums over there at the Anarchy Crew. I want to give a thank you to Bunny to Nate to Mindy to Thomas to Tim J to Jessica to Shaylin to Tim G to Chill Baby to Tamara and to Adam. Thank you guys so much. You guys are the shit. And then I also want to give the biggest a big motherfucking thank yous to the chappies over at the chapbook of the month club to Caitlin and to Chase. You guys make me squeal. So thank you for that. I appreciate you. And then um, since we are still in crowdfunding mode, I also want to give a thank you to those who have been um, hitting up the uh, Winner Your Mom Sodomy Prize for Poetry and trying to make that thing real. So I want to give a big thank you to Caitlin, to JH, to Bunny, to Shaylin, to Deb, to Chase, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, J, to Brian. And I think, actually, let me look real quick, because I think there are a couple others on here, too. Also, thank you to Deb, to Tamara, to Jeff, to Adam, and to Matthew. Thank you guys so fucking much. You guys are awesome. That's fucking awesome. That, ow, motherfucker, I'm on fire. Fire. Oh, I could have started doing the cult right there. Fire. Something in the ball, ball, That was awful. Oh, yeah. That's what happens when you're not paying attention, guys. And you're, like, getting all excited about the people who are contributing to your campaign. And you're not realizing that your handmade cigarette the cherry is about to fall off because you're at the filter and then it just falls off and lands on your hand and you're just like sitting there thanking people while your fucking flesh is on fire melting and burning I think espresso's kicking in guys oh shit that's the way to do it Ugh! I think this is how this is gonna go this has been kind of like the bane of my existence for a little bit Okay, everybody, guess what? We're going back over to Elijah to hear him run his liquor about some stuff, okay? Because, like, seriously, like, this is so funny. I'm trying so fucking hard to just, like, not ever mention this dude's fucking name again. (laughs) A part that's driving me crazy the most is that how just, like, dense... Um, he is and b- before I said I'm like look I'm not gonna fucking make this personal you know everyone's fucking entitled to their opinion I'm taking it personal because I'm a fucking artist but like I understand that he's not talking to me 
Like, he's not talking directly to me. Well, now he's fucking talking directly to me. And so now I can fucking take this personal. And so now... The fucking... Like, it, it, it's on. You know what I'm saying? It's just like... Now there's nothing fucking holding me back. And I still feel fucking guilty. And I still feel bad. Because... Um, I just want to fucking yell and scream. But anyway, this was on the beginning of, I don't know, some fucking episode of his. And it's so funny because I don't listen to his fucking show because I, I don't fucking like it. Like, and this has nothing to do with him. Okay. I just do not care for his show. No big deal. No big whoop. And um, a friend of mine's like, oh, dude, you should go check it out because he apologized. And I'm like, oh, well, that's fucking cool. Let, let me go, like, hear what he has to say. Or, like, he was trying to bury the hatchet or fucking something. I don't fucking know. This is how this motherfucker tries to fucking smooth things over. Oh, my God. So, um, Elijah, I, I know you're probably going to hear this. So, let's hear, let's hear the whatever. However, if you absolutely hate my show, boy, do I have a podcast for you. There's a podcaster out there in the world named Matt Wall. And to say that his feathers were ruffled by my meter and rhyme episodes would be a severe understatement. His feathers were so ruffled, in fact, that he released an episode of his own podcast, the I Hate Matt Wall podcast, entitled The Case Against Versecraft, where, for 45 minutes, he expresses heartfelt indignation about the first six minutes of my meter, first meter and rhyme episode. I invite you to listen to it, if only because it may serve as a kind of exercise. Versecraft, after all, is a podcast about textual analysis. And I invite you to listen and see if you can identify the myriad misinterpretations of the text, mistaken assumptions, equivocations, and unsupported dogmatic assertions that Matt makes in the course of this episode. Dude, pot, kettle, dogmatic assertions? Are you fucking joking? Do you understand that almost everything you fucking say is a fucking assumption? That you try to fucking masquerade as an absolute? Fucking hell, dude. Oh, my fucking God. Okay, calm the fuck down, dude. Okay, here we go. Here we go. As well as basic blunders, which include, but are not limited to, creating talking points out of the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl in a conversation about the cultural climate of the 1920s. This is so fucking funny. In this little bit where he's like, oh, in the 1920s. <laughs> dude, I was talking about a whole generation of fucking people. And I was, and I went back from the fucking beginning of fucking radio. I was talking about a chunk of fucking time. And I'm sorry if I didn't give you the exact fucking date that every stupid fucking thing happened that makes your fucking points useless. Okay, so if you want to get into fucking actual fucking Wikipedia entries of what things happened on what day, we can fucking do that. But if you want to have a fucking conversation about society and culture, which you obviously know nothing about, because I don't know if you've actually talked to human beings before, we can do that too, okay? As well as asserting that there is such a thing as a formal poetry mafia, one can only dream. Okay, the funniest thing about the formal poetry mafia, I say it in jest, but here's the thing. All formal poets want free verse poetry to die because it makes what they do look like shit and makes it look fucking stupid. Of course, there is no fucking formal poetry mafia. You want to know why? Because formal poets can't fucking agree on anything. And if you don't believe me, go to the fucking goddamn fucking Slee Ricketts um, secret show substack thing. Motherfuckers on there are arguing 24-7 about every fucking poem that ever fucking existed. You guys can't fucking agree on anything. I can't even imagine going out to dinner with you guys. Like, hey, what do you guys want to get? I don't know. Let's fucking argue about it for nine fucking hours. Jesus fucking Christ. Of course it doesn't fucking exist. But you guys act like it could and that it does and that people need to fucking bow down to your fucking intellect superiority. Nobody fucking cares. As a man of an anarchist bent, Matt is particularly disturbed by the idea that anyone could believe that art, and the quality of art, is not purely subjective. This is symptomatic of what is perhaps the chief intellectual irony of the relativist postmodern. This is symptomatic of you being a fucking douchebag, okay? This is so fucking funny. Like, hey, guess what? You're making a fucking good point, so I'm just gonna fucking say it's symptomatic of fucking ironic fucking behavior. Art is subjective or else on that fucking Substack chat, all you guys would fucking agree. 
It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out at all. This is so fucking stupid. If you guys can't all agree on something, then obviously art is subjective. You, How can you not fucking understand that? People believe that a belief in the subjectivity of values is an objective value, a dogma beyond reproach. The self-defeating paradox and hypocrisy of this attitude, to say nothing of the appalling moral ramifications, is evident, but it is so deeply entrenched in some people that they often fail to recognize its absurdity. Well, thank you for stepping down long enough to have that conversation with me. And I feel so blessed that you came off your fucking high horse, you piece, to fucking speak at me. Matt demands that I reveal who is entitled to be the judge of artistic quality, to which I must respond that we can all strive to be judges, but only the most thorough and sound arguments will succeed as acceptable judgments. Person A and person Why? B may disagree about the value of a work of poetry, but that doesn't mean we can throw up our hands, say art is subjective, and call it a day. Why not? Person A and person B make their respective cases for their positions, and we will see who is more convincing. You don't have to convince anyone. If you have to convince somebody that art is good, the artist failed. Art is feeling, bro. It comes from inside you. When you see something that strikes you, it fucking goes through your body like a fucking bolt of electricity. Okay? Like, no one would be able to, like, like oh, you're, I'm going to have to debate you for an hour for you to understand that this art is good. Oh, my God. Even if we have to trace the argument back through personal history, psychology, ethics, and metaphysics, all the way to fundamental axioms. Even if the parties do not ultimately find common ground, they will have at least learned precisely why they don't agree. And the process will have revealed much, much, much to them about the poem, themselves, and their interlocutors. It's so funny. He's spending like five minutes trying to explain the science of a conversation. Motherfuckers just talk. People say what they feel about something. People say they like this. They don't like that. People discuss why. That's it. It's not this really like hard to understand. Let's figure. I got an MFA. Like people have conversations. People talk. That's it. Like it, it doesn't have to be a fucking experiment. Given them a deeper understanding of the human nature which they share. Rinse and repeat, and you have the glorious project that is literary criticism on your hands. Literary criticism is so garbage. Much about creating a science out of art, as refining our artistic philosophies and analytical faculties to be as wise, discerning, and comprehensive as possible. Oh an asymptotic pursuit, perhaps, but a noble one. We are all here to help each other get closer to the truth. Which is why, ultimately, I have to. I will agree. Like, Getting closer to the truth. Like, that's our job. So that's fine. And what I'm doing right now is trying to get you closer to the truth. Okay? Because you obviously don't understand it. So, with that being said, I agree with you on that last little bit off of that ridiculously long and stupid fucking goddamn fucking preachy ass fucking thing you just did. So now that he fucking just like raked me over the coals, he's going to try to fucking like say something nice or something. Which is why ultimately I have to thank Matt Wall, not only for providing me some free publicity, but for making his criticisms known. Critic okay. So he's going to thank me now. Okay. So that's cool for the free publicity. Okay. Um, I don't want you to have publicity off of this. Like, um, if you ended up having a couple more people listen to that episode because I bitched about it, then, you know, fuck. That wasn't my goal. You're kind of like the um, poster child of everything I hate about poetry and um, the literary world. So, like, you know, like, that wasn't intended. But, you know, if you're happy with that then that's cool but for making his criticisms known criticisms which while far from convincing enable me to learn more about why my opposition thinks the way they do i also have to say matt if you're listening to this judging from what i know of you elsewhere i think you're a really nice guy 
Honestly, I think if we weren't talking about art, we would probably get along just fine. Furthermore, I admire the passion you have for your art, a passion which, believe it or not, formalist drone that I am, I share as well. I understand if you feel hurt by some of the things I've said, and I find the fact that they have been hurtful to be sincerely regrettable. It's been a long process to make my rhetoric less snide, and I'm still learning. You have to understand, however, that I am fighting for what I believe is right, and if that means slaughtering some sacred cows, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, just so you know how an apology works, okay? You can't apologize for something that you have done and then afterwards say, but I'm going to continue to do that. That makes your apology fucking not an apology. It makes it fucking useless, okay? Now, if you are also going to say that you're actually trying to make your arguments less snide and not come off like a fucking pompous piece of shit all the fucking time. I'm going to fucking help you out right now. I'm going to fucking give you a little bit of advice. You can fucking take it or you can fuck off. I don't give a shit. Okay. But here's the thing. If you want to be able to have a conversation with people where people don't want to fucking punch you in the fucking face, the best way to do this is to not minimize the things other people hold dear. I can say formal poetry is not good because I think it's stupid and people who like it are pretty much dumb. That's kind of what you're fucking saying here. And on that fucking episode that I haven't even fucking put the episode out of that I did, the arguments you make, the six arguments you make for free verse poetry where you actually are just like tearing it down. You make arguments that no human being has ever fucking said. And you are making that the basis of your fucking arguments. And they're, they're bullshit. And I, like, now that you have some sort of open dialogue with me, like, I feel like I can go at those from a different fucking point of view. But at the same time, I kind of don't even want to fucking do it. Because I don't want to just sit here and fucking yell into the void and then have you go out and do another fucking episode where you fucking just say that everything I say doesn't fucking matter. And then we end up doing this fucking bullshit again. So I'm telling you, if you want the fucking publicity, come on my fucking show and I will fucking argue your points with you. And hopefully then that would be fucking cool and everything's fine. The other thing I don't like is that you fucking say in your fucking show notes, you can listen to the Comedy Central roast of Versecraft here. Guess what? Those roasts, people do roast because they respect the people they're fucking roasting. I don't fucking respect you, dude. I fucking don't because you have not proven that you deserve any fucking kind of respect from me. All you have done is say that free verse poetry is bullshit. What I say about it is bullshit. Although I I do have a lot of passion and so do you. So everything should be cool. Okay. But when you fucking take a piece of shit feces and cover it in powdered sugar and gold and fucking tell me it's an apology It's still a piece of shit, dude. So that apology is not a fucking apology. Anything on there. And like, honestly, I've heard that we would probably get along really, really well. The thing here is, is that I don't fucking care that you write formal poetry. No free verse poet gives two shits at all that you write formal poetry because nobody fucking cares. People can do whatever they want when they're creating art. So why the fuck do you think you're the fucking cop of the fucking literary world that you need to police what motherfuckers are doing? It's fucking ridiculous. And again, I'm not going to fucking get into the things, but you know what you fucking said on that fucking episode, dude. And you know the things that are probably going to piss someone like me off. Okay? So if you want to fucking put your money where your mouth is and fucking like stand up and fucking talk about that shit with me like dude open fucking door you can fucking come on here and we can fucking talk and at the end of that 
av- after having an actual fucking conversation, maybe I will respect you. And then maybe I could fucking do a roast on you and it'll be fun and people will giggle. But as of right now, I don't fucking respect you at fucking all, dude. So, you know, but again, if you don't want people to fucking like immediately turn off when you start talking, do not minimize them. Okay. And just because you say, oh, I understand what you're saying. Doesn't mean you actually do. If you immediately just like tear it down, you know, like, and this whole thing, it will help you in talking about poetry. It'll help you in your friendships and it'll help you in your relationships and it'll help you in business. Do not minimize motherfuckers if you're trying to fucking have a conversation with them, okay? It's just fucking simple fucking, like, how to fucking talk to somebody, okay? We all have our fucking social picadillos, dude. I have mine, okay? So, I'm not giving you shit on that. But I'm just fucking saying, there are ways to fucking make your fucking arguments that probably work a little bit better and some might say well maybe if you weren't so fucking angry and cussing your fucking arguments would come across better great but guess what i don't fucking tell you that you can't fucking do something you can do whatever the fuck you want and that's fucking awesome and as long as you're creating i'm fucking happy the world's fucking happy but don't fucking do what you fucking do and you know what i'm fucking talking about Oh, plus he likes the fucking Viking era of Bathory better than the fake fucking Satanism fucking era of Bathory. And I don't know if I could let that stand. That's a whole other fucking topic. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm fucking like on fire right now. Like my fucking like, uh, it's like fucking ripping out of me right now. So here's the thing, dude. And again, like, do I think I could fucking talk to Elijah and have a fucking conversation with him? Of course I fucking do. Do I think I can fucking, like, have a good conversation with him and we'd be fucking laughing and having a good time? Of course I fucking do. Because I'm a fucking charming motherfucker and I fucking know how to fucking have a conversation with somebody. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. I was going to do some fucking email shit. I'm not going to fucking do that right now. I'm all fucking pissed off. So anyway... That was a fucking thing, am I right? Um, And with that said, um, we're going to kind of get into um, part of the show right now, now that we are fucking 35 minutes into this fucking bad bitch. So, um, today we're going to be talking about politics and poetry. And um, this is something that is dear to my heart and is another thing that causes a lot of fucking like arguments and shit when I bring it up. I've been having a really fucking hard time. Like I was talking about COVID as to why like this next episode, this one you're listening to right now took so long to fucking come out. The other thing that happened is there are a lot of fucking things happening in the world right now that, um, are making it fucking really difficult for me to fucking think talking about poetry is worth anything at the minute because there are some serious fucking things happening in the world. And then, like, I wanted to keep coming on and talk about things like trans rights, um, gun control, the thing that kills more kids in America right now than anything else, um, what's going on in Tennessee right now. Um, There are just tons of things that deserve fucking attention and deserve people talking about. And what fucking drives me crazy is when I hear all these people saying like, you know, I just, I can't be bothered with that shit because it just like, it brings me down and it like harshes my mellow and shit. So I just like, I I don't want to deal with that, you know, and all this other shit. And that fucking makes me so fucking angry because the only reason why we're in a situation where things like this can even happen is because good people sit around and do nothing because it's like, you know what I'm saying? And, And that's fucked. There's another part of me that with that being said is like, you know, people listen to me, listen to this show, watch my fucking YouTube channel, read my fucking poetry because it's kind of 
a vicarious release. It's entertainment for them. It's edification for them. It's education for them. Um, it's all this shit to get their mind away from all that other shit. You know? So I, I feel torn because I understand that there is a huge part of what I do for people that um, is kind of like a a little ray of sunshine on a somewhat cloudy day kind of thing, you know? And so I don't want to, like, minimize that or trash that. But at the same time, it's getting really difficult for me to not speak up. Um, it's, it's one of my foibles that I constantly want to fucking yell and scream from the rooftops about shit, you know? So... This topic about politics and poetry, I've been putting it off for a long time because I've been um, kind of studying shit. I have my own fucking theories about shit. Um, and I've been reading up on some stuff. But, and I also had um, some really great shit from the Alice Allen interview I did where we talked about... Um, politics and poetry and politics and literature and stuff like that but I can't find that file right now I've been looking for it and I don't know if it's like COVID brain like things aren't clicking right or if I saved the file as something fucking weird and now I just can't find it but um, or I could have just actually deleted it thinking that I didn't need that file anymore for some stupid fucking reason but um, if I come across that I will eventually grab that but I, I can't find it so so basically, there are a couple things here, and one of the biggest arguments people have about political poetry is that it doesn't do anything, because it's fucking poetry. It's not like I'm going to write a poem about um, an assault rifle ban, and then tomorrow um, the assault rifles will be banned. You know what I'm saying? And because that's not how it works, a lot of people find that it's actually a useless form. Like, if you're going to fucking, like, do something, if you're going to protest something, then fucking go out and protest something. If you're going to do anything, like, go out and make change. Don't just fucking write a poem about it. And I can understand the idea of action being more important than um, words on a page. But, 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 the reason why political poetry is important is because it begins to normalize shit that should be fucking normalized. Okay? And when we hear about um, Ginsburg and Howell, okay? That was that came out in the 50s. And it wasn't like that fucking came out and then the next day every, like, dude was out banging a dude. That's not what this means. That's not how this goes. You write these poems and people at that time would consider those poems brave. They go, geez, I can't believe, oh man, I can't believe how brave this fucking dude is for writing about this. This is fucking amazing. I can't believe it. And then what that does is inspire people. And then those people will write poems about that. And their um, situations around that topic. And it happens so much over the decades that it becomes not just old hat but it's old hat because it's normalized so like you can fucking like talk about Howell in the 50s okay Ginsburg and all this other fucking shit okay and go that's just fucking crazy that that even happened but you could also go over and listen to Breaking Form right now and listen to two openly gay poets 
talk super tongue in cheek about poetry. And a lot of times they read poems written by other people in the LGBTQ community talking about the things they go through. And that is fucking normal. And if you would have fucking told Allen Ginsberg that shit like that would go down and it would be normal back in 1958, he, he would he would have started crying. He would have said, I can't believe that that's even going to happen. Okay? And he did see a lot of great positive change in his lifetime. Don't get me wrong. And we can have a whole conversation about Stonewall and what I think about that. Normalizing shit is our job. That is what a poet's job is. It's taking something that... Um, an injustice. Writing poetry about it. To the point... Where it becomes like people would go, like, I can't believe people would fucking like be against this. Like, what? And so the poets of the world are kind of like the first line of defense when it, or the first line of offense, I should say, okay, of the artistic community. And then like musicians will read the words of these poets, filmmakers novelists, painters will read these words and start integrating these inspirations into their own work. So much so and so much so over the course of time that suddenly other people 20 years from now are taking some crazy thought you had and making it normal everyday shit. Okay? So if you are getting into political poetry because you want to change the world, that's awesome. That's what you need to do. But just know that you're not changing the world for you. You're changing the world for future generations. And that's what your job is. That's what political poetry does. You write the poetry to change your kid's future. Okay? And then you go out and you protest and you go out and stand up for those things the poetry is to inspire the future the protest is to try to get things done now do you see what I'm saying that's how this goes so if you need to think about what are the things that you want normalized 30 years from now what would those be like, what are the things that you want? What are the things that you want to stand up for? What are the thi What's the injustice that makes you fucking sick to your stomach and makes you want to just fucking scream? What are those things? Talk about those things. Write about those things. Publish those things. I don't ever want to alienate my readers. I don't want to alienate my listeners. But I have to be true to who I am. Okay, and just because I don't think assault rifles whose whole purpose is to murder humans is a good thing for people to have, that doesn't mean that like me and you can't chat, me and you can't talk. I just do not see what the purpose of it is. And I know that the NRA spends millions of dollars every year on every kind of propaganda they can to make other people think that this is a normal thing and that this is okay. <laughs> like, we can chat about it if you want, you know? Um, but what I would like you to do, like, if you are somebody who thinks the loss of assault rifles is going to fuck your Second Amendment rights and be unconstitutional, then use your First Amendment right and... Write a poem about it. Write a poem explaining to me why it is important that you have a weapon that can um, make exit wounds that you could drive a car through. Why that's important to you. Like, if it's something that is that deep in you and you feel like your rights are being threatened, write a poem about it for future generations, like I was saying earlier. Tell me. Tell me how you can be pro-life that you're so fucking worried about babies. 
but you are completely okay sending your kids to school. I can't even imagine being a fucking kid right now. Like, I was in high school when Columbine happened. And that was pretty crazy. But this happens every week. There's been 130 mass shootings this year. And that was back from um, the Tennessee shooting was the 130th. Kids must be losing their fucking mind going, oh my god, I'm going to this place where I might not come home. It's fucking crazy. So, how can you be worried about abortion and wanting to save all the lives of these unborn babies when you also want so bad to have this weapon that's whole purpose is human annihilation. It is not a hunting rifle. You pretty much cannot eat what happens after that. those bullets hit your target. So, like, what the fuck do you want it for? And then if, if you think it's because King Charles might come and fucking, I don't know, sleep in your bed and you're worried about the government, okay? Like, if you're as old as I am, you remember what happened in Waco. That didn't go over well. You can have all the assault rifles you want. The government has drones and tanks and fucking nuclear weapons. Like, how is your fucking AR-15 gonna fucking help you at all? If some fucking cop drone strikes your fucking living room, dude. Like, it's ridiculous. It's it's not even a fucking... It, it's a joke. Like, militia groups are like, yeah, dude, you know, we got our fucking guns and all this other stuff. The FBI is like, that's hysterical. Like, we could, like, wipe a whole city block off the face of the earth in three seconds. But yeah, like, cool, you have your guns. Like, feel good, dude. I don't know. Like, I just, I don't get it. I've never been into guns. I've, I've, even when I feel like I, like, leaned more conservatively than I do now, I never understood guns. I just don't get it. I just, like, I always, I don't know. I, I just, it, it sounds like a, like a small dick move. Like, you need a big gun for something like the same reason why people need big fucking trucks and fucking sports cars you know like I just don't get it like if you if you can't murder someone with your bare hands you don't des deserve to murder anybody <laughs> that, that's just that's just how it goes dude if you can't murder someone with your bare hands and drive a smart car then you don't deserve anything oh I'm getting all over the place now I'm going off the rails here but yeah, it's been really hard because I just, I want to fucking yell and scream. Like what happened in Tennessee with the shooting and with the expulsion. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. It's ridiculous. These are dark days. Dark fucking days, dude. What passed in Idaho? Dark fucking days, dude. But what happened in Wisconsin, that's kind of cool. But, you know, I don't know. Like it's it's just like... If you feel strongly about something, create art about that. You know, let the future know that there was a time when their normal was not normal. That's it. That That's what I'm getting at here. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, um, I guess that's that. Let's get into the butt plugs. <laughs> Um, so, butt plug time. Here we are. IGG.me slash at slash your mom. Get um, winner your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. Pick your tier. Pick your perks. And get all the fun fucking cool shit you get with it. Including, I'm going to be throwing in Blood Rag Issue 9. And I'll probably be throwing in Blood Rag Issue 10. Which is coming out this week. Um, you'll also be getting my chat book runner up for um, nothing in there if you get that. Um, but also, I want to throw out a couple shout-outs here, too. Um, Tim Johnston from the Anarchy Crew um, has a small run um, chapbook called Dark Matters. It's great. Um, 
I do not know exactly. I'm still waiting to find out like how people can get this. So um, when I get that information, I'll put it in the show notes. And then also um, Bookworms. Uh, it's a zine that has like um, horror fiction and articles and there's a crossword and a maze and uh like a ask dr j section it's really cool i have an article in here um and i'll leave a link to the etsy shop where you can pick that up down below as well so go get those things um and i'm debating on if i want to start doing the podcast live Still want, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about that. If you have any questions or comments or your fucking hate mail or Elijah, if you want to fucking get in touch with me to fucking get on here and say whatever the fuck it is you're going to say, uh, send an email to I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com. Do the right thing, everybody. Get your mom. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.